my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as you have probably already heard, this week the bankruptcy court approved the joint agreement reached earlier this year between survivors of clergy sexual abuse in the Diocese of Duluth. This agreement now takes effect, meaning that after nearly four years, survivors will receive financial compensation for what they have suffered, and the diocese will emerge from bankruptcy. No amount of money can ever heal the suffering of these innocent brothers and sisters of ours. Only Jesus, the divine physician, can do that. But it can serve as a sign of repentance and accountability and solidarity. As I have said at the outset of this process, those who have suffered abuse in the church remain our precious brothers and sisters who have been harmed and deserve nothing less than our particular love and support. Their courage and insistence in speaking out while hopefully helping them on their journey of healing has also helped the church to be accountable and to do the right things in ways we have not managed to do on our own. They deserve our thanks for this. This agreement will affect all of us. As we have recognized from the outset, we will be a poorer church financially going forward. In addition to insurance money and funds from the diocese itself, Every parish in the diocese has voluntarily agreed to contribute to the settlement, as have many other Catholic entities in the diocese. The diocese has contributed from savings, from the sale of the bishop's residence, and by going into debt. But I want to address you briefly today as your pastor. The faithful of the diocese have had a mix of often conflicting emotions through this long purification we have experienced and will continue to experience compassion for those hurt, anger at those who hurt them or fail to protect them, disappointment, frustration, grief, doubt, betrayal, fear, fatigue, and more. Our Catholic faith gives us an essential truth of communion here, that the church, despite our sins, is the body of Christ, born from his wounded side on the cross. The blood and water that poured from his side and the supernatural source of healing and reconciliation and peace. St. Paul teaches that each of us have our place within this one body and that within it, when one member suffers, all suffer. And that when one member sins, all are wounded by it. We can draw from this that even if we may not have suffered abuse ourselves, we have a share in the suffering of our innocent and vulnerable brothers and sisters who did. And although we did not personally commit the grave sins of abuse or its cover-up, we have a share in making reparation for our brothers who did. The priests and other clergy of our diocese have can, taken this reality personally, contributing more than $70,000 of their own money to the settlement in grief at what their brothers in ministry have done. While this is a new stage in the life of the church, the journey of healing and reconciliation and doing everything we can to wipe this scourge of abuse from our midst is, as I have often said, the work of our lifetime. There is a danger of fatigue here, of growing weary of hearing these heartbreaking stories or imagining it's all over now and letting our vigilance grow slack. We cannot allow that to happen. Our efforts, at creating safe environments since 1992 have made a vast difference. But without diligence in persisting in those efforts, what is to prevent a repeat of these horrors, which is, as daily headlines remind us, continue to plague all of our society? No, we must learn the painful lessons of the last decades thoroughly and keep putting what we have learned into practice. As we continue to experience all these things, I ask you to do so with an open heart, offering your suffering in union with the suffering of Jesus on the cross, in solidarity with those who have been hurt, and in reparation for the terrible sins and crimes of those who wounded them, for which we are brought low everywhere in the world this day according to our sins, the prophet Daniel says. In the midst of our poverty and grief and humiliation, our call remains the same, and it's one of hope, holiness, and faithfulness to Jesus and bringing the joy of his friendship to our part of the world, making him known and loved in northeastern Minnesota, and being ministers of his mercy, which is his love where people are hurting. We can be confident that God, 
in the mystery of his providence, brings good out of everything, even our suffering and poverty and broken hearts. Please pray that one good he will bring from all this is reconciliation and healing within the church. I close again by offering my deepest sorrow and humble apology on behalf of this local church, all its clergy and all its faithful, to anyone in our midst who has been harmed by sexual abuse. We hold you close in prayer and ready to hear you, to offer whatever pastoral assistance we can, and as have we have for many years, to assist you in obtaining the counseling help that you need in your healing. I offer this in prayer in Jesus' name and ask Our Lady of the Rosary's intercession. Thank you.